In this video, I'm going to talk you through some of the connections you might want to make when you're connecting a home theater. We're looking at the back panel of a fairly middle-of-the-road surround sound receiver. Sometimes it's called an AVR, audio video receiver. Uh, we're using this particular receiver because it has a lot of connection points on it, and I'm going to talk you through those I'm going to talk you through most of those connection points, not every one, because some of them uh, simply don't pertain to uh, most of the connections most of us will be making in our homes today. But before I start to go over the connections on the back of this receiver, I want to talk a little bit about some wires, because I think there's confusion that some people have, or a lot of people have, regarding wires. So I want to talk about wires. Now, chances are you've seen this. This is called a composite cable. This is one of the most common cables that we find, be it uh, from our satellite box or DVD player. Everybody has them in their houses, most everybody. This right here, this yellow one, is composite video. And that's audio and that's audio. So the red is audio, the white is audio, and the yellow is video and it's composite video. Now these plugs here, uh, these are RCA jacks, RCA plugs actually. On the back of the receiver you'll see a lot of RCA jacks. These RCA jacks they are commonly found on the back of receivers, on the backs of televisions, you know, current televisions or older televisions, uh, on the backs of uh, DVD players, satellite, CD players, they're, they're the most common connection that a home electronic will use. Uh, but again, back to the cable, this is a uh, composite video cable. That's actually a composite video cable, and that is an RCA jack. Okay, so the other thing we want to look at is speaker wire. Now, this here happens to be what's called an 18 gauge two conductor speaker, well I'm sorry it's a four conductor but we're only going to use two conductors. Uh, it's an 18 gauge two conductor speaker wire. It's fairly common. You would use this for a pretty basic home theater setup. Speaker wires come in all different shapes and sizes. Here's a 16 gauge. Uh, it's still in its jacket and the jacket is this plastic coating on the outside right here. Here's another jacket. Here's a jacket of that 18 gauge wire. It's just a plastic cover. Now here is what I believe is a 14 gauge wire. This is a very high end cable. This is for a very high end home theater or somebody who just wants to uh, purchase some of the best stuff they can. Uh, wire, speakers, stereo, etc. And a question that you might be asking yourself, does the wire really matter? Well, yes and no. Um, if you just want to enjoy basic surround sound, you're going to be absolutely fine, in my opinion, with an 18 gauge wire. If you're looking for a very high-end, state-of-the-art uh, home theater, then yes, yeah, speaker wire is going to be important. You're going to want to buy a quality wire such as this one. Uh, there are wires that are much higher quality than this, but uh, this is a 14 gauge. and uh, So that's speaker wire. Now, on the back of this receiver, one type of input that's not on the back here is HDMI. However, here is an HDMI cable. Uh, probably pretty familiar with that. If you have a flat screen TV, you have an input for that particular type cable. Uh, HDMI stands for High Definition Multimedia Input. Uh, it is a digital cable, so it's going to help reproduce the best quality video, and it's going to match the sound. That cable, there's no input on the back of this receiver because again, as I said earlier on, this is a little bit older receiver. Regardless, if you get a brand new receiver, it's going to have many of these inputs on it and it's going to also have uh, this input on it. And I want to talk about component cable. Down here, I don't know if it picks it up in the video, but here are three RCAs uh, in a row horizontally, green, blue, and red, and that represents component video. Component video is the highest quality video format which came out right before HDMI. But as you can see, the jacks are RCA. 
The jacks for component video are RCA. Just like these jacks over here are RCA, they're RCA. But in order to make component video, and I stress the word video, just the picture, not the sound, just the video, you have to have the green, the blue, and the red hooked up. So, notice again we go back to this cable, right? We have three RCA plugs, one, two, three. And it requires all three to make the component video work. So you could go down to a local store and ask them for a component video cable and the cable's going to come out, it's going to have three RCA jacks like this, green, blue, and red. But if you happen to have a few of this particular cable, this composite cable that I described at the beginning of the video laying around at your house, you could use these as your component video cable because it's three RCAs and you have three RCAs here. The key is, is that Let's say you use the red to plug into the green. Well, when you connect it to the TV, you better be using the red and the green at the TV or you're, you're going to get a really bad picture or, or no picture at all. So make sure you match the colors. Regardless, uh, the other cable connections we're going to look at here is S-Video. Now S-Video is the next generation of this composite right here. Now I'm going to get into the wiring connections in just a minute, so bear with me. I want to try to give you some foundational information before we get into actually connecting the wires. So here's S-Video, correct? And S-Video, if you'll notice, it's sharing the same group of input line here as composite video. So this whole line is a video input. In other words, on this one line, you would be able to connect one device such as a let's say an older DVD player so you might connect an older DVD player on this particular input and you could choose to use the S video connection if you happen to have that cable laying around or you could use the composite video connection which you know these things are all over the place you probably have them in your house like I said earlier now <clears throat> it's fairly simple to make these connections I'm going to start with the speaker binding posts over here, okay? Now, there are actually two types of speaker binding posts, and it, actually using the term binding post is inaccurate. There are two types of speaker connections. There's a binding post, which I'm touching with my pencil here. You have the red and the black, and then you have the clips down here. The clips are they're a little bit uh, cheaper of a connection, but they're a little bit easier to connect. But let's go back to the banana plugs. What you're going to connect to these connection points are your surround sound speakers. Now, if you look at the bottom of this video, there's a link that goes to the website, and there's some more information there about you know surround sound and how to lay out speakers and things of that effect. It's kind of a whole different topic. I'm not really going to touch on it in detail. But let's go back to that speaker wire. Remember that 18-gauge uh, conductor wire I showed you? Now, if you look closely, I don't know if it'll show up in the video, but this is red and this is black. So you could use those red to red, black to black. Well, actually, you could do any color combination you wanted. It doesn't necessarily matter, but let's say this particular binding post goes to one of your front surround sound speakers. Well, you can twist this binding post open, strip this wire back, and you take the black, right? Strip it back, maybe a quarter inch or a third of an inch, something like that. Kind of twist the copper together, and then you want to stick it up in there. Like this. And then just close this. And you want to make sure that you have a really snug connection of copper to copper. So the copper that's in the speaker wire should touch the copper or the metal part that's inside of this binding post. Now there's another method you can use and a lot of uh, professional AV people do it uh, because it's easy. It's called a banana plug and a banana plug simply, you see this big hole right here, simply slips in there and the wire is inside that banana plug. So you could do that. You can get a banana plug for around seven bucks a pop. So 7, 14, 21, 28, you get the picture, it's pretty expensive. But it makes for an easy connection point. And the other thing is a banana plug sticks out about that far, generally pretty far. And a banana plug is one more cog 
cog in the wheel, so to speak. It's another connection point. So every time you put a connection point in a speaker wire, or any wire for that matter, you, you degrade the quality of the sound or the quality of the video just a little bit. Um, not, a mu not much, but the more you do it, the more you degrade the quality. So anyway, that's how you're going to connect. The first thing you're going to do is connect up your speaker wires. And if you have a 5.1 system, which, again, go to that link below the video. That'll tell you about surround sound speaker placements.